Good morning, chemistry students. Nice to see you today. I hope you're all doing well. We've had a long spring break. You are probably tired of hanging out at your house, but we have to keep doing that for a little while uh, because of this COVID-19 and you know all about that. I, I am concerned about each of you and wish I could see you, wish I could talk with you. Um, if you are today feeling a bit overwhelmed because school is starting, you're hearing from all your teachers, you're getting emails and you're, get, you're getting instructions in Blackboard and I, I am sorry for what you're having to go through if you are feeling overwhelmed. Um, I apologize, but we do have to have school. Spring break is over. Best approach, I think, is for you simply to start thinking, well, I'm back in school. From eight to three, I need that many hours to devote to school. And um, if, if you're having any difficulty dealing with this, feel free to send me an email uh, and, and, and I will do what I can. I care about each one of you. Hope you're having a good and safe experience here as we wade through the rest of this quarantine, stay at home kind of situation. Well, um, here are a few things that you should know. Uh, you, you've gotten an email from me telling you, giving you this link. So that's why you're watching this. This is in YouTube. Uh, I've whitelisted it. Uh, therefore, you should be able to get there on your Surface device. Uh, hopefully our IT staff has done that. They've whitelisted it. Um, and the information you need is in topics. If you go to Blackboard and to our class and click on topics, I've never used topics before, but uh, now we're all using it. Um, it will have what you need to do each day for chemistry. Um, and today is Wednesday the 25th. Uh, all it says is that you need to watch this video and take notes. Now, uh, your homework though is to take a picture of your notes and email it to me. That is your homework and you will get a homework grade in Blackboard for doing that. So make sure you do. Um, uh, those uh, paper, those emails, uh, pictures of your notes are due by 10 a.m. the next day. So today's Wednesday. They're due by 10 a.m. Thursday morning. Uh, that email needs to get to me by then for you to get full credit for the homework. So don't forget to do that. Um, I'm going to try my best to make this actually easier than it would be if we were in school. The videos will never be more than 30 minutes, or at least that's my goal. Um, often less. Uh, today, our objective is to learn one definition for the, for the word acid and one definition for the word base, because we are now in your textbook, we are now in chapter 18, which is acids and bases. Uh, and, there, and there is more than one definition, but today we're going to learn one definition. So you'll take notes, you'll take a picture of the notes, email that to me and your homework's done. Now look tomorrow for another video. Uh, but again, all the instructions will be under topics and I hope that's clear. If you have questions, email me with questions. J. Claxton at davidsonacademy.com. Um, when we get ready for a test, we'll deal with that at the time. Not worried about that yet. I'm having to learn how to do all this, these things that, uh, that I don't really like to do. I like standing in front of students and teaching. And now I'm looking out and seeing nothing but 
my house. I'm in my home. Now behind me there's a whiteboard you might have noticed and you might be wondering why is there a whiteboard at your house, Mr. Claxton? Well, I borrowed this from Mr. Campbell. I went into school over spring break and, and with his permission, yes, and I took it from the band room and loaded it into my car and brought it home. So I have a whiteboard in my house now. I'm going to use it to teach. Um, hope you'll be okay with that. They have since closed the campus, so I'm glad I got it before they closed the campus. But uh, it's now here. And maybe you'll just forget that I'm in my house and you'll see this whiteboard and think I'm at school and you'll think you're at school and we'll all be happy. All right. Another point to make is that some of the days, and this is one of those days, I will simply make one lecture video for all three of my chemistry classes, all three. That would be fourth period and fifth period and seventh period, all watching the same video. So it's going to be hard for me to call on you. Uh, you know, Jalen, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to call on you, but but people in the fifth period class won't know what's going on. Jalen, are you still there? You, okay, you, you're looking at me. Good. All right. Um, anyway, that's the way it's going to be. And I, you still haven't had to take any notes. We're almost seven minutes into this video, and I've just been talking. I'm wearing you out. I'm sorry. So let's begin. All right, there are some terms. Now keep in mind our objective is to get to a, a definition for acid and for base. Well, that's where we're headed, but first, let's talk about this word, the electrolyte. You've heard the word electrolyte. Perhaps you have, um, yeah, I, I know I was standing in front of the word Troy, so I'm gonna move out of the way. But the word electrolyte means, um, or you've heard of it as, as something that's in a sports drink, perhaps. You're going to replenish your electrolytes by drinking Gatorade. Well, here's what an, an electrolyte really is. It's a substance that will conduct electricity uh, as a solution. When you dissolve it in water, that's a solution. When you dissolve it in, this is an, an O right there. Katie, don't worry that I'm, I realize it doesn't look like an O. But um, when it's dissolved in water, it will conduct electricity. That's what the word means, electro, see, electricity. Well, Gatorade will do that if you, if you try to shoot electric current through a, a container of Gatorade, it will move through the Gatorade. Pure water doesn't do that very well. Uh, and something needs to be dissolved in the water. See, a solution. All right, that's the electrolyte. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is this. I'm going to tell you now that all acids and all bases which is what this chapter is about. And I'm going to add a third word, all salts, S-A-L-T-S. -S. And, we'll, and we'll get to salts later in the chapter. I'm not going to even talk about salts today, but you know what, at least you know what salt is, the kind you sprinkle on your, on your eggs you know, for breakfast. Yeah. All three of these are electrolytes, meaning when you dissolve an acid in water or a base in water or a salt in water, it will become a good conductor of electricity. All right, that's the first thing, electrolytes. Second thing, there I erased the board. Second thing is there are some general things you probably already know about acids and bases, still working toward that definition. We, I haven't told you what an acid is yet. But here are some things that you already know about acid, and here are some things you already know about a base. Perhaps you know. In general, 
acid <clears throat> an acid will react with a metal acids react with metal they don't react with just anything some people think get the idea that acid will eat through anything well no it won't if that were true you couldn't put an acid in a bottle and and expect it to stay there it would eat through the bottle so acids do not react with glass or plastic, but they do react with all metals. They will, it, it will eat its way through a metal. All right, bases, though, don't react in general with metals. They will react with uh, non-metals, specifically organic compounds, organic compounds containing carbon. Bases react with organic compounds. That's why a soap, for example, is, is made of base. It will dissolve through the organic material on your hands when you, when you wash your hands, which you're doing every day, and you're singing happy birthday to me. And uh, that's because there's organic material on your hands. There, there's coronavirus on your hands and, you, and that's an organic material, and you'd like to, to wash it off. And so you do. Hope you're doing that regularly with a base. All soaps are made out of base. All right, anyway, there's one difference. The, the next difference between acid and base, again, something you already know, is, I think, is that an acid tends to taste um, sour. Sour taste for acids. Now, some acids you, you, you better not taste. If I give you a bottle of hydrochloric acid and say, hey, drink this, you'd be tempted to do it because you always do what I ask you to do. But no, you would say, no, I'm not allowed to drink things in chemistry class. Come on, Mr. Claxton. But some acids are okay to taste. Orange juice. Everybody drinks orange juice. You should be drinking orange juice. Vitamin C help you stay healthy from the, con the, the COVID-19. All right. Anyway, sour taste. Bases tend to have more of a bitter taste. Um, not many bases do we eat, but go get a bar of soap and, and take a bite out of it and, and see what it tastes like. Ooh, no, don't do that. No, I take it back. I was just kidding. Stop. Uh, no. <laughs> Wait, don't. Don't go. Do that. Don't do that. Kendall, stop. Put the soap down. I was only kidding. But if you did taste it, maybe you you take a shower and, the, and you get some soap in your mouth. It tastes bitter. All right. Now let's get to the definition I'm just telling you some general properties, some things about acids and bases, but now let's get to the properties, or, or rather to the definitions. All right, there are, as I mentioned, three definitions, but this is the first one we're going to talk about today. This is the only one you need to take notes on today. Th these definitions are given to us by a guy named Arrhenius. A-R-R-H-E-N-I-U-S, Arrhenius. Um, have, you ever, have you ever heard of Arrhenius? Probably not. Uh, have you, Sam, ever heard of Arrhenius? No. Well, you have now. He gave us the first definitions for acid and base. He lived in the 1800s. So this, these definitions have been around for a while. Here's what happens if I have here a container of water and I take an acid in its solid form and dump it into the water, it will dissolve in the water. But what happens to the acid in the water is this, the, each, each particle of acid, each formula unit of acid will donate a proton to the water. It puts a it puts a proton into the water. A proton leaves the acid 
particle and goes into the water. Now, a, a proton can be written this way. I'm going to write this and let you look at it and see what you think. That's a capital H, which you probably know. Emily, what does H stand for? Correct. Hydrogen. <laughs> it's an element. But if I put a plus sign up there, that means it is, that means, snay, what is it? It's an ion. That's correct. It's a positively charged ion. What is a positively charged uh, ion for hydrogen? Well, hydrogen is only made of a, of a proton and an electron. If you turn it into an ion, the electron goes away. That's what an ion is. It has gained or lost electrons. In this case, it loses it. If it loses its one electron, what is it? It's just a proton. There it is. Okay, so when I say it donates a proton, you can think of that as a hydrogen nucleus. Because that's all there is to the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, one proton. So, so that represents a proton. You need to get that in your head. Well, these hydrogen ions then fill up the water. They, 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 they are now in the water. Therefore, if you see hydrogen ions in the water, you know it was an acid you put in there. All right. The definition then becomes for acid, this is according to Arrhenius, any substance, any substance that produces Protons in water. P R O. <laughs> I didn't spell protons right, did I, Katie? No. Protons in water. Can you all see that whole thing? I hope so. Any substance that when you put it in water, it produces protons, that's an acid. Protons meaning also could be thought of like this. Hydrogen ions. You can say hydrogen ions, and you, it would also be correct. Now, one more thing before we leave this definition. This is not the end of the story, because hydrogen ions floating in water will react with water molecules. So watch this. Here is the water molecule. Here is the hydrogen ion, and they will actually combine in a synthesis reaction and if you put these things together, all right, Kendall, use your, your chemistry expertise, Kendall Ball, ooh, fourth period. What do you get when you put H2O with H? Yeah, what, what is H2 plus one more H? Kendall, right, it's H3. Sorry, Kendall Head, you were probably answering that too, but yeah, this is H3O. Is that going to be on the screen? Yes, I think it is. H3O, but it's positive because that was positive. And this thing here is not water. It's not H2O. It's H3O. It has a name, and you need to know that name is hydronium. Hydronium is the name for H3O positive. So, this definition could say a substance that produces hydronium ions in the water. You can say protons, hydrogen ions, but the hydrogen ions turn into hydronium ions. If you see hydronium ions in water, you know there's an acid in there. All right, that's first definition right there, acid. Now I need a first definition for a base. According still to Arrhenius, we're still on number one set of definitions. Arrhenius says an acid is anything that produces this in water. Well, a base is anything that when put into water, you take a base and put it into water. That says base, Katie, B-A-S-E. Uh, a base is anything that when you put it into water, it will produce, I'll say in water, in water, a base will produce 
OH negative ions in the water. Yeah. Now, OH has a name. It's actually a polyatomic ion that was on the, the chart. Ooh, does anybody remember the polyatomic ion name for OH negative? Anybody? Do you, Elena? You are correct. It's hydroxide. H-Y-D-R-O-X-I-D-E. Hydroxide is the name for OH. So the definition, according to Arrhenius, for a base is any substance that will, <laughs> that will, in water, produce hydroxide ions. Yeah, I didn't word that very well. But if you take a substance and put it in water and you see hydroxide ions, which are negative, then you know there's a base in there. All right. Um, here are some examples. Here's at least one example of an acid. This is hydrochloric acid. Now, we're going to learn to name acids later, but for right now, you see that H? When you put HCl in water, the H comes away from the chlorine and goes into the water. That H comes away from the chlorine and becomes H+, and it combines with the water, as we've already said, and produces H3O. So that's an acid. It has hydrogen. Acids have to have hydrogen in them. All acids have hydrogen in them. Okay. And then an example of a base would be sodium hydroxide. NaOH is the, is the ooh, I'll bet you can't see that. Here you go. NaOH is the formula for sodium hydroxide, and that's a base. And when you put it in the water, this OH goes into the water. All right, so to summarize, when you put an acid in water, you get this positive hydronians. When you put a base in water, you get this, negative hydroxide ions. <sighs> All right, first definition. I will want you to know, what did Arrhenius tell us an acid is? Anything that in water produces hydrogen ions, which turn into hydronium, positive ions. That's an acid. What did Arrhenius tell us a base is? Anything that when you put it in water, it produces hydroxide ions, negative ions. All right, you've got definitions for acid and base. Make sure that's in your notes. Take a picture of them, email it to me. That's all you have to do for your first day of school in chemistry. Uh, we've been going for 23 minutes. I'm going to stop now. I love you guys and hope you stay safe. See you tomorrow. Bye.